What in the world is that? Well, <laughs> welcome back to Burles for Family Homestead, everybody. My name is Darcy. That is called Schmaltz. And I'm going to be honest with you, it has skeeved me out and I have never saved it for our use. But I'm changing that and I'm going to save it. So I cook with rendered beef suet, which is called tallow. I use bacon grease. I use lard. But for some reason, chicken fat has skeeved me out. <laughs> so we're going to save this. I We recently butchered our meat birds for the year. So I've made bone broth with that. And the result is when you chill that broth is the schmaltz <laughs> comes up. Now you can just do this by rendering the fat and the skin for this, but because I put all of that in my bone broth, we have it here. So I'm going to have to scoop it out. It is softer than tallow and lard. This is cool, but it is going to get soft fast. So I want to scoop it out. You can use it in the same way. I did read that you can use it just like butter, but I'm going to say a big nope to that right now. Maybe I'll get to that point sometime. I am not slathering this on a piece of toast. Just no. <laughs> but I do want to try it for, you know, cooking things in the skillet, sauteing, you know, that kind of stuff. So let's see what we got here. The ones with regular mouth are going to be a little bit harder to get out. So this is pretty runny already. So I guess I'm just going, I probably should get my small little label ladle. But what I'm going to do for storing this, you can see these, this is I think an eight ounce container. Uh, I'm just going to store it in this in the freezer. So I'm going to scoop as much of this out as I can. I'm going to get my ladle and I'll bring you right back. That doesn't look very appetizing, does it? <laughs> Okay, I got this little ladle. I think that will help. I don't want to get the broth in it. But like I said, I am gonna store this in the freezer. I was looking to see what the shelf life, or well, not shelf life, like fridge life of this was. And the, the information was all over the place. They're saying a week in the fridge. Other places said six months in the fridge. So I'm just gonna put it in these small containers so I can pour, pull it out to use it. I can't imagine that I would need more than that amount for anything at one time. And I will store it in the freezer. Now freezer, same thing, six months to indefinitely is what, so I guess whatever you think there. So some of the jars, let me show you, have less than others. So it's, I just poured these in as I made it. So the fat rises to the top. So we can scrape it all out. And this is part of the canning process. So I haven't canned my broth yet. And you do need to skim the fat off before you can it if you are following safe tested canning methods. On this second one here, let me show you real quick. You can see a couple little dots there. That is from the broth. So I'm not real concerned about that because this is going in the freezer. If this was tallow or lard, you'd wanna get as much of that liquid out as possible. But I am not gonna store this on the counter or in the fridge, it is going in the freezer. So I'm just gonna use these, I'll label them. These will be easy to just pull out, scoop some out, or use the whole thing depending on my use. And that will add another fat oil source to my pantry or actually freezer. And so the reason I decided to start using this, even though it skeeved me out a little bit, I don't know what it is. <laughs> and I'm sure if my husband is watching this, he's like, Lord, I don't want to eat that. <laughs> is because I don't want to use like the typical seed oils and things. Um, I want to use lard and tallow and this. I do use avocado oil also but I don't like canola oil or vegetable oil because of what they are and what is in them and what they do to our bodies. So if you just choose to use that, go for it. Uh, it's no shame here, but that's what I choose for our home. And so, I, and I want to make use of what we're growing. This is just one more way that I can more fully utilize the animals that we are raising here to feed us and honor those animals' lives by using as much of them as possible. 
I am going to be canning bone broth. This video is not for that, but I am going to pour that through this nut milk yogurt bag into my kettle just to help catch anything that I might have missed. And if the fat is still kind of solid, it will stay in this bag too before going in. Um, I won't be able to save the little teeny bits in this bag though. It would be next to impossible. I pulled a quart jar out just to add a little bit more and you can see that this one is, well, <laughs> it's a little bit more solid. So you can have a couple different textures of that when you make bone broth and you scoop that fat off. And this one is actually a little bit easier to pull out without having the broth. So I am mixing them up. I'm not separating them or anything like that. So I guess we, we need to use this, right? Ooh, what should I use it on right now to do a taste test? I'm not, I'm not tasting it by itself, I don't think. Should I? Oh, oh, okay. For you, for you. Now, I have to tell you that my bone broth doesn't have anything but chicken carcasses, skin, organs, feet in it. There is no salt, there is no veggies, there's nothing so that I can use it on whatever. So this is like, <laughs> this is like 100% chicken fat. <laughs> okay. Cheers. Mm. Oh, I missed. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's not bad, it has chicken flavor to it. I mean, that was weird because it like immediately liquefied in my mouth. I have tasted uh, tallow and stuff before in my mouth. So I guess, all right, I didn't die. It has, I almost thought it tasted a little bit like soap. <laughs> Did you guys ever get your mouth washed out with soap when you were a kid? I may or may not have. <laughs> All right, I am going to find something else to use. Maybe maybe I could cook an egg in it just to see if I notice a, t a taste. Is that weird to fry an egg in schmaltz? Let's do it. I guess I should have filmed me frying that egg. I did notice that it kind of sizzled more than when I first put like bacon grease or something, but I've noticed if I fry in tallow also, it it kind of sputters more than some other oils. But anyway, here's just a regular old scrambled egg, salt and pepper. I didn't use a ton of oil. So I mean, I guess it's not like fried fried egg, but you know, a little bit. I don't think it tastes any different. Yeah, I can't taste that I that it, I wouldn't say it tastes any different than any other scrambled egg. So that will definitely be something to use for, you know, frying eggs or whatever. And I didn't die. <laughs> and I didn't vomit. <laughs> so I've got a couple of these. I've got lots more to do. But thanks for coming along as I get over my things that skeeve me out. What kind of things have you wanted to try but have been hesitant to because it kind of skeeves you out? Have you ever used this? Would you use this? <laughs> I think it's going to be good. It's just one more way that I can provide for my family and reduce the grocery bill, which I think we could all use. Thanks for coming along. Until next time, guys, God bless.